Good morning, and welcome to the first segment of today's World Diabetes Day webinar. I'm Dr. Ray, an Associate Consultant in Endocrinology from Tan Tok Seng Hospital. And I'm Dr. Caroline, a Consultant in Endocrinology from Woodlands Health. We're here today to answer some of your frequently asked questions about diabetes. Whether you are someone living with diabetes, newly diagnosed with diabetes, or a friend, family member, or caregiver to someone with diabetes, we hope you will find your time with us today helpful. So, let's get started. Caroline, our first question is, what is diabetes? Well, diabetes is a condition of high sugar levels in the blood. It is due to insufficient or ineffective insulin. Insulin is a hormone, which is a type of messenger chemical produced by the pancreas. When blood sugar levels are high, the pancreas begins to produce more insulin. Insulin helps to lower blood sugar levels by allowing sugar to be used by the cells of the body. In this way, blood sugar levels are kept under control. In someone with diabetes, because of insufficient or ineffective insulin, blood sugar levels rise. Prolonged periods of high sugar levels will cause damage to blood vessels, organs and nerves throughout the body. Diabetes is a growing problem in Singapore. Up to one in nine people in Singapore has diabetes, and this number is increasing. The burden of diabetes-related complications is also on the rise. Two out of five stroke victims, one in two heart attack victims, and two in three new kidney failure patients have diabetes. So it is important to diagnose and treat diabetes early to prevent the onset of these complications. Let's answer the next question. What is the difference between type 2 and type 1 diabetes? Well, type 2 diabetes is the more common form of diabetes. It starts when the body becomes unable to respond to insulin properly, leading to high blood sugar levels. Type 2 diabetes usually develops over many years and is influenced by lifestyle factors like an unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, and being overweight. It also tends to run in families. Type 1 diabetes is less common, but it is an important form of diabetes to recognize. It tends to affect children and younger adults, and is due to a complete lack of insulin production in the body. Unlike type 2 diabetes, People living with type 1 diabetes need insulin injections to control their blood sugar. Without insulin, someone with type 1 diabetes can become very ill due to high levels of sugar and acid in the blood. There are other types of diabetes as well. Gestational diabetes affects pregnant women and may predispose to diabetes later in life. Certain medications, such as steroids, can cause diabetes. So let's move on to our next question. How do I know if I have diabetes? People with diabetes can develop symptoms of tiredness, frequent urination, excessive thirst, blurring of vision, and weight loss, among others. These symptoms usually occur when blood sugar levels have become very high. Also, when sugar levels are dangerously high, they can lead to severe dehydration and acid buildup, resulting in admission to hospital. However, Diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, which is more common, usually doesn't give rise to any symptoms until many years later. That's why it's important to go for regular health checks, especially if you're above the age of 40 or have risk factors for diabetes, such as being overweight or having a family member with diabetes. So Ray, if I have diabetes, how can I get my blood sugar levels under control? Well, that's a great question, and I think there are several different uh, aspects to the answer. Firstly, it's important to establish regular contact with a doctor or medical team with experience in managing diabetes. This can be your family doctor at the polyclinic or general practitioner clinic or a diabetes doctor in the hospital. Your medical team will review your case and provide blood sugar targets that are specific to your condition. For example, we might choose different blood sugar targets for a younger person 
just diagnosed with diabetes versus an older person with diabetes for many years or someone with kidney problems or someone struggling with problematic low blood sugar. Secondly, the way to lower blood sugar often varies depending on the type and stage of diabetes. In someone with type 1 diabetes, insulin injections need to be given. On the other hand, someone with mild type 2 diabetes may respond well to changes in diet and lifestyle or low doses of tablets. Others may need higher doses of medications or insulin. Whatever the case, once a treatment strategy is decided, regular follow-up is necessary to determine whether the treatment has been effective. Caroline, what do you think? I would also add that diabetes treatment is not just about managing blood sugar. It also involves reviewing blood pressure and cholesterol levels to keep those under control. You should attend your regular eye photography and foot checks to detect any early complications. Sometimes, special medications to protect the kidney and the heart will need to be given to you. Also, specialized interventions like smoking cessation and weight loss programs may be needed as well. Here's the next question. What challenges are faced by people living with diabetes? That's another great question. We recognize that everything that we've said so far may seem overwhelming, especially to someone who has just been diagnosed with diabetes or who is struggling with blood sugar control. Do speak to your medical team about your concerns, as it's important to share any difficulties you are facing so that they can be addressed. Some may find it difficult to take multiple medications regularly amidst their busy schedule. You might find it useful to set phone reminders or use pill boxes. In certain suitable cases, your doctor may also be able to simplify your medication regime. Many people living with diabetes share that it is challenging to find affordable and healthy food outside of the home. We want to reassure you that suitable local food options are available and affordable. Keep watching for the sharing from our dietitian colleagues later. We also know that sometimes medication side effects can be troublesome to deal with. Do inform your medical team about these so that your medications can be adjusted to something more appropriate for you. Finally, the cost of medications, glucose monitoring equipment and follow-up may be an issue for some patients. Engaging your medical team about these concerns is important so that we can help you find solutions while still maintaining your diabetes control. This may involve applying for additional subsidies or financial aid schemes. Okay, now it's time for our last question. Can diabetes be reversed? That's an interesting question. We've talked a lot about how diabetes can be controlled but whether it can be totally reversed is a very relevant question for the future. For now, we do know that people with pre-diabetes, meaning they have very mild blood sugar elevation, can reverse their condition with intensive lifestyle adjustments, such as weight loss, diet changes and exercise. So this really highlights why early screening and diagnosis of diabetes is important. Ray, have you got any last words of advice for people living with diabetes? Well, um, diabetes is a lifelong condition. Some of our patients have likened it to a journey with ups and downs along the way. It's important to remember that no journey is walked alone. And with good support from friends and family and good engagement with your medical team, it's possible to overcome various challenges and to live well with diabetes. 